Thank you to our sponsors for today's video, Nokian Tires, Amber, InfiPower, and Star Charge. Nokian Tires is a leader in safety and sustainability. Maximize performance and efficiency with their made-in-USA all-season tires and their dedicated Hakapalita EV winter line from the inventor of the winter tire. Learn more at nokiantires.com slash EV. And Amber, providing modern protection plans for your Tesla's battery and more, without the hassle of long-term contracts or upfront payments. Check out the link in the description to explore their plan options and use code SPEC5 for a 5% discount on all plans. InfiPower is the largest EV charger module provider with over 3 million power modules running reliably worldwide. Their latest G2 collection features ultra-high power density and efficiency for EV charging and energy storage integration. InfiPower, innovation for your power. And StarCharge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world and is also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage, as well as microgrid solutions. Hello, good evening, and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video, and welcome here to Loveland, Colorado, and welcome to our Lucid Air Grand Touring. We've done plenty with this car over our couple months with it and over 12,000 miles of use so far, but today we put it up against the most important challenge an electric car could face to us and for many of you. It's all about the road trip simulation, the 10% challenge. We already know this car goes incredibly far on a charge, and I'll walk you through all of the specifications on the car and everything, but it did over 510 miles at 70 miles an hour in our highway range test. And we already know Lucid's charge really fast. We've seen a peak of over 350 kilowatts on Lucid's before, but today we put the charging performance and the highway range together to simulate and benchmark how well this car road trips. And then of course we will compare it to its competition, such as the Porsche Taycan, which is really the main road tripping EV competition. And guess what? We're running that car on the same day. Ryan's about to pull in here with the Taycan. So we'll have really comparable numbers of the two big boy road trip kings here. I really can't wait to get the numbers logged. Okay, let's see what the heck is going on here. We have our Lucid Air Grand Touring. This is the 118 kilowatt hour spec. It is at 11% state of charge. We're waiting for it to dip to 10. And so while it's still running some preconditioning and getting ready for everything, let me walk you through what we are going to be doing here. So our 10% EV road tripping challenge is all about getting to a charger at 10%, simulating what you would do on a road trip. Most people probably feel comfortable getting to a charger at 10%. Now me, 0%, 1%, easy. My mom, 25%, 30%, she's happy. So we just figured 10% was a happy medium and that's probably where most people feel comfortable arriving to a charging station. So what we do in all of these tests is we get to the charger at 11%, you know, try to get to the low end of 11%, run the heater, run some loads, let it dip. As soon as it dips to 10%, we'll then plug it into a high power DC charger. You can see we have an empty station. This is why we do it in the middle of the night because public charging is getting really crowded these days, especially in our area. And uh, we essentially will charge for exactly 15 minutes at a full maximum performance session. Now that means the car needs to be able to accept full power. And I drove this car down from about 45% to 10% on the highway, getting everything nice and warm uh, and preconditioning the car to this charging station, of course, so that we can have the best possible charging scenario. We don't do this just for Lucid. We do this for every single car we test. We try to eliminate as many variables. Once we're charging, we're gonna charge for exactly 15 minutes. However, after we plug in the car, there is gonna be a delay between when we plug in to when it actually starts charging. 
That's what we call the handshake time, and we will log that separately, and a lot of that time is due to the charging station, it's due to the car, and it's not always repeatable. Different hardware <laughs> interfaces with different cars for different times, but one thing I will say is we'll at least let you know what the heck happens here. We're then going to jump on the highway, which is right over there, and run 80 miles an hour, which is more than our typical highway range tests. The reason we do 80 miles per hour is well, I think that's probably the speed most people drive, especially out here in the West on road trips, maybe even more. I mean, certainly more. So I think that's more of a representative speed for road tripping. I like to do the range tests at 70 because the cars get actually pretty good numbers and we're looking for comparable results. Uh, but here doing 80, that this is what this test is all about. We'll then go out about halfway, come back here, and we'll try and get from 11 down to 10% on the highway, still running 80 miles an hour as close to this charger as possible to counteract any wind and elevation. And oh, by the way, the biggest stress test of this all is while the vehicle's charging, we leave climate control running in the car because that is simulating what you would do. You'd leave, you know, hit keep climate or pet mode or wait in your car while it's charging. And that stresses the thermal systems even more. So let's go run the test in our Lucid Air Grand Touring on the aero wheels, the full range spec. This is the new 2025 with the heat pump, which is gonna help tonight because it's pretty chilly out here actually. Not much we can do about it. We are coming into fall conditions. So it's 59 degrees, 60 degrees Fahrenheit right now at around midnight. But I think it's only going to get chillier, especially as we go north. So that heat pump is going to be helping. And what's cool about this is both the Taycan and the Lucid, the next video will be the Taycan, by the way, are fully kitted out to be the complete range kings of each model. And um, they have almost the identical mileage and use case on both cars. Lots of DC charging on both, pretty much just under 13,000 miles on both. And we've had them for, I don't know, a lot of driving. So let's get this plugged in as soon as it dips, it dips to 10%. You can see here the battery is preconditioning. This is what it has been doing this entire time. And I've also programmed in the charging station here to the nav. And I think, um, you know, between those two things, we should have the battery kind of at the perfect temperature. I wish uh, Lucid would tell us that we were at a good or bad temperature for charging. The Taycan does. That gives you so much more information when it comes to managing battery temperatures. But I've got climate control running. I've got our rear fog on, high beams on, everything on to put as many loads on the car as possible. That's not true. We can hit the rear um, you know, sort of, uh, what the heck you might call it, ice de-icer in the rear. So yeah, we'll just wait for hopefully not just another couple minutes. It'll go from 11 to 10. We'll shut off all loads, get the car charging, then set the climate control to a normal, comfortable, you know, 72 on auto like we have it here, I guess, just to kind of rip this a little bit faster. We'll put the heat on full just to pull it down to 10 and we'll go through the 10% challenge. This is going to be such an important test for this car because that is what this car is known for. High power charging and big range. And the, the Taycan is known for the same thing. And to be able to run them both on the same night will be amazing. You can see here the temperature is quite chilly outside and probably only going to get chillier. But I'm actually okay with it because we are coming into the winter months, of course. But also the two cars that matter most in this test is the Lucid Air Grand Touring, which is the biggest battery and longest range version of this car. You can get more efficient versions of the Lucid if you spec the Pure especially, but then you don't get the big battery. It doesn't charge as fast. It wouldn't do that well in this test or as well, I should say. And then the Taycan's going to be run on the same day. And that is the rear drive big battery car. So Ryan's going to be doing that video. I'm going to be taking on the Lucid, honestly, because I kind of love driving the Lucid. I haven't spent as much time with this car as I've wanted to. Jordan's really been doing everything with it. So I want to get back into the whole Lucid thing and drive this for as much as I can before Lucid makes us give it back to them. And again, we picked up this car with just a couple hundred miles on it and we're up to 12,982. So shout out to Lucid. Thank them in the comments for letting us have this car to literally do everything with it because it's been wonderful, truly wonderful to have the newer Lucid with all the updates. The car is so much improved from the earlier versions. Not saying it's perfect, but it's certainly getting there. And just like that, we have dipped to 10% state of charge right there, 10%. And um, we still have preconditioning going, but 
Um, that's okay. It says we can plug in while it's still preconditioning. So let's do that. I will get a 15 minute timer going as soon as it clicks on and then I'll show you the, uh, the charging session from there. Normally I have another device with me and, but I got to use this one. So let me get it plugged in and we will do the 15 minute situation. So here we go. We've got the station number four. This is the one Ryan says normally works okay for him. I need two hands here. I'm going to get it plugged in. I'll let you know the handshake time and then we'll look at the charging performance. We are plugged in and we are at about 12 seconds right now for the handshake. Plug in charge is working. This vehicle does come with free Electrify America for a long period of time. I really don't see Lucid owners abusing that. Um, so I think that's totally fine. Still communicating, hasn't started charging yet. As soon as it does, we have to kick climate control on. So come on, charge, baby. There we go. Contactors just clicked. Start the 15 minute timer now. And I'm also going to kick on climate control right there and also climate keep. That way it won't shut off during the charging session. And boom, big numbers right there. 280 plus kilowatts right off the bat. 290 when climbing. Oh baby, 300 kilowatts now almost. 300 plus. It's a monster. <laughs> oh, hell yes. Let's go. Dang. 309 kilowatts, 310, 311. Now I've seen upwards of 350 kilowatts on this thing now. 320 kilowatts delivered there from the charger. 321. And that's where we peaked. 321. And then it came down to 314, 315. Wow. That was quite exciting, but also pretty typical of Lucid to sort of rip charging down low. And then you can see we're already up to 14%. Is that true? Can we be? We've put in five kilowatt hours. I guess so. Um, it seems maybe like the, it's a little bit optimistic with the state of charge rise there, but damn, just gets right up on pace. 300 plus kilowatts still holding. And so we're gonna let it do its thing. Climate's running, everything else is off on the car, including even the lights. And I've left keep climate so it will stay running while we exit. And you can see now we're just hovering right around 290. But the thing with the Lucid is they always peak on plug-in, pull the pack voltage way up and then they just brrr, take a nosedive versus Tycon that just climbs and climbs and climbs. And Tycon does not come off uh, 300 kilowatts until 65% state of charge, maybe even, yeah, plus or minus somewhere around there, 62 to 65%, depending on temperatures, not this one. Uh, but we're talking about this has cylindrical cells. It has the Samsung 53G cell. Maybe that was just in the dream edition. I forget exactly what cell this has. It might actually be from a different supplier. So don't quote me on the Samsung thing. I think I'm actually wrong on that. But uh, Tycon uses a pouch cell. This uses a cylindrical cell very different technologies. There's benefits and downsides to both. And we're already down into the 280 kilowatt range, which, you know, this is a 118 kilowatt hour pack, 280 kilowatts. It's still ripping. Don't get me wrong. But, uh, you know, I just wish it would hold that 300 plus for a long time. Anyway, we'll let the charging session go. I'll let you know when we hit certain, uh, points along the way, some notable moments and, uh, damn, I know we're getting a good session. That's for sure. So just in terms of prep work, I'm sure you guys would want to know, I've already set the tire pressures when cold to the 49 PSI recommended pressures by the Lucid, which means when we're on the highway, they're actually going to be like 50, 51, 52 PSI, really high pressures. And part of the reason this car has such great efficiency is the wheel and tire package. Without question, these 19 inch aero wheels make a lot of difference, but also really reduce maximum performance of the vehicle. So when you launch it, it spins the tires. You can slide it around easily. Uh, it's like you're driving on these little hockey pucks everywhere. And to be honest, if you put it on really grippy tires, the range will decrease. So everything is always a compromise. This is not new to any of you guys, but I know there might be some new viewers as well that are curious about the spec and the setup. And well, there you have it. And here comes Ryan in the Tycon right now, ready to rock and roll. And what we're going to actually do is probably wait for the Lucid to finish up. I'm going to go out, shoot our video. As soon as we're done, Ryan's going to plug in in the Tycon. And again, 
they are both specced to be the longest range and fastest charging variants of each car. The cooling fans just kicked on the Lucid four minutes in, doing 257 kilowatts now at 27%. We've already put in 21, 22 kilowatt hours has been delivered to the car. Absolutely amazing results. Cannot wait to see how much energy we put in. And then really can't wait to see, of course, the Taycan. My guess, I'm sure you guys will agree with me, is this is probably going to be more efficient. And it's a, you know, roughly the same size car, but also much better packaging in the Lucid than the Taycan. Without question, this has a much larger interior for almost the same footprint as that car. But that car also charges like an absolute monster. So it's really driving efficiency versus charging power here. And that's not to say the Taycan's inefficient because it's not too bad. Um, so yeah, I'll check in with Ryan, see how things are going, but yeah, this one's ripping. You join me now, seven minutes, almost eight minutes into our charging session, and we are just about to dip under 200 kilowatts here at 38%. Not the end of the world. This is not me complaining. It's just me wishing that this car had, yes, the range, but then that charging performance. Don't you think, Ryan? It would be incredible. It would be incredible. It would be unstoppable at that point. So. I want my cake, and I want it. <laughs> so right here, 38%, boom, we're off 200 kilowatts. Uh, so that's basically when it happens. But what's cool is the Model 3 long range rear drive, which is more efficient than this car without question, uh, actually added 37 kilowatt hours from the charger in 15 minutes. And this just did it in eight minutes. And I shouldn't say it's that impressive. There's a much larger battery pack, but still, don't take any criticisms here like Lucid has bad charging. It's just inconsistent charging that makes it kind of annoying. Holy smokes, we're rolling up on 13, almost 14 minutes. We're down to 150 kilowatts here at 51%. I'm noticing a little bit of wind down here in the Loveland area. However, it's actually looking very still as we go up north to Cheyenne, which is unusual, but that's why we picked today. It was the warmest night of the week and we have the least amount of wind. So um, certainly the Lucid and the Taycan are both incredibly efficient cars. And that means they're actually affected even more in a sense, by external conditions such as temperature and stuff. So we're within one minute of unplugging, getting very close. We've put in already 52 kilowatt hours. I keep saying put in, but this is what's been delivered. And then of course there's losses during the charging session into the battery pack. So take, I don't know, roughly 10% off that number. And uh, yeah, we'll get ready to unplug here in uh, here as soon as this thing hits 15 minutes. Turning off keep mode now says we've added 216 miles of rated range. We're gonna be just about getting ready to unplug right as this Ionic 5 pulls up. Perfect timing here. Hopefully uh, Ryan's able to still pull full power in the Taycan. If that battery gets too cold, won't work. 15 minutes, 54 kilowatt hours delivered to the car and we are ready to go. Shut off all loads and then reset trip computers. So we'll see you later, Ryan. Have a good test. Okay, guys, we are in the Lucid now. I've shut off climate control, but the AC is still running hardcore to cool the battery. So it's important we get on the road as soon as possible. You can see tire pressures are set perfectly at 49, which is what they should be when cold and the car's been parked for a little bit. So we're good there. We're gonna come here to trip information and reset trip B. I'm gonna turn the car on, get it into reverse, climb it on at 70 degrees on auto. Okay, we have no real eco mode other than smooth. I'm gonna make sure rear HVAC is off. It is. We are gonna run climate with AC on since that is how we can actually um, maintain cabin temperature. And then we'll just go jump right onto the highway. Ryan's ready to go plug in the Porsche and uh, figures crossed he gets a huge result here. Should be really fun. Let's go blast. So actually I have to be a little bit transparent with you guys, but Lucid is part of the reason that this test came to be. And I have to give a huge shout out to Peter Rawlinson for this because he's always been saying, and I agree with him, that outright charging performance isn't the end all be all. Uh, the fact that a Silverado EV can hold 350 kilowatts to 50% and has this crazy curve is great, but that truck is so inefficient 
that actually for the amount of energy and for the amount of time that you take in while charging, you're not actually going that far. So what really matters is miles added, usable miles added per minute of charging. And that is exactly what this test is simulated to show you know, how useful is that 15 minutes of time you're at the charger to get you down the road onto the next? How far can you go after? So that's what we're about to find out in the Lucid Air Grand Touring. Gentle accelerations here as we merge up onto the highway. The car is in smooth mode, which actually can deactivate the rear motor, even though it's a permanent magnet motor with no clutch disconnect at low to medium speeds. At 80 miles an hour, I think it also is still disconnected. Come on, let's go, let's get up to 81. There we go, 81 indicated is 80 miles an hour GPS. I can activate the driver assistance system and um, we are set. I'm gonna pop into our express lane, which is still free, thank you, Colorado. And we will just ride here and cruise until we get about uh, half of our replenished range value and then we'll turn around and head back. So we'll probably get pretty bad efficiency on the first leg. We always do a little bit of elevation climb, but then we'll try and counteract all of that by ending right by the charger so that it shouldn't make too much of a difference. Uh, so this is our typical 10% test loop these days. And the Taycan, which is the main competitor, is doing the same thing on the same day at the same time. So that's what we like to see. Guys, you might notice this stretch of road right over here. This is where we run the electric cars to dead when we're doing our 70 mile per hour range test. So if any of you watched our Lucid test, I actually uh, came off of 70 miles an hour kind of right on this ridge. And then we coasted down and then all the way back on that deserted frontage road, which was just hilarious. It just went forever past zero. Anyway, you might see me oscillate between 81 and 82 miles per hour. I'm just trying to get it locked in as an overall 80. It's like 81.5 <laughs> is like the perfect 80 mile per hour GPS. The one thing that's interesting with Lucid's though is these always read a bit over, but then your odometers are dead on perfect. We've we've done so much with this car. Again, 13,000 miles of testing. That odometer matches Google Maps, satellite tracking, everything. So yeah, it's just right in between 81 and a half, 81 and 82 is where we need to maintain speed. Anyway, things are going well here. Every time I get back into a Lucid, I just sink into the seat, especially for highway cruising, and just love the ride quality. It's an honest, fixed suspension with adaptive damper, but still steel spring, and I just love the way this car drives. In my opinion, there is almost no better driving electric vehicle for considering the fact that it has so much space, it's incredibly fast, but then very efficient and comfortable. I can't say enough good things about the driving performance of the Lucid Air. I will say the new auto lane changes work like 50% of the time, um, but when they do work, for example, it should work kind of now, lane change initiation, so it's doing all this on its own. Boom, good, nice, and then I'll go to the right. Good, I'm glad it's doing it for you guys now on video, hell yeah. Good news, friends, we have officially passed the Toyota BZ4X, woo! And still plenty more distance to go. We are cruising into Cheyenne and we actually have to merge onto I-80 now. So we are about to exit because this thing is gonna keep going. Our efficiency is pretty poor, 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour. Uh, but that is because we've done the climb and it's slightly chilly outside. Just scrubbing a little bit of speed for this big exit ramp. Um, Ryan's only in, uh, he's in Wellington, so he's not far back at all. And he is getting 2.4 miles per kilowatt hour. So we're being more efficient at the moment than he is. So it must have rained here a while ago. The road on the concrete pavement was completely dry. I can sense, maybe it's just fresh pavement, but it looks wet and greasy. It doesn't feel wet, but it kind of looks wet. Uh, anyway, uh, we're, we're looking for dry roads. So yeah, you can tell here the pavement, you got the dry grooves where the tires have taken all the water off. So we're gonna stay in those, get back up to 80 miles an hour and keep it moving. Must have had just like a little local trinkle or sprinkle is what I'm looking for. But so far it's been dry conditions for us. And as long as we keep the tires on the dry pavement, we should be okay. We are nearing our halfway point where we will be making our U-turn. We're down to 30% 
state of charge and we are still a little bit higher elevation than when we started so I went up a little bit farther because I expect to be a bit more efficient on the way back you can see though things are looking good efficiency is going up 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour they'll probably go down as we head back to Cheyenne it's the same as our range test nothing new here it's why we run a loop style test so I'll kick it off 80 miles an hour right here we've traveled 77.7 .7 miles so far which would indicate an over 150 mile result uh, I don't know if we'll reach that that would be pretty amazing so the previous lucid air we've run one of these before and it did really well but it actually did maybe a little bit too well to the point where we never even posted the video we did put the results on the website but Ryan wasn't super comfortable with the results because he got stuck in quite a bit of traffic so when you are of course going slower you uh, lose use less energy and a lot of that is of course yes just draw on the battery and motors and reducing heat loss but mostly your aerodynamic efficiency of the shape of the car and uh, Lucid Air, by the way, is one of the most aerodynamic vehicles on sale. I can't think of one better. I don't know what it is for the Grand Touring. Uh, Lucid Air Pure is like 0.19-ish, something like that. So um, below point zero point two, which is pretty incredible. And um, But that you always have to multiply that times frontal area we say this all the time it, that doesn't tell the whole story but i have to say the car's pretty low but it is wide um uh, so yeah oh man here i am accelerating to 70 for like we're on a range test we got to go to 80 it feels wrong because we're always doing range testing so boom 82 we'll probably run 81 most of the way back because i've done most of the way up at 82 but um yeah, of course, those little interchanges bring down our average speed a little bit. It doesn't really matter too much. Uh, we're getting into the nitty gritty, but yep, we will, um, yeah, like there's a lane change that didn't work. So I had to manually take over and uh, put the car in this lane and then it locks back in. Not a big deal. So we're at 30% heading back to Cheyenne. I guess we'll knock it down to 81 at the moment and uh, cruise and see how far we can go. Holy smokes, looking forward to this. I just saw Ryan going the other way. So we are in the same area. The cars are pretty much hitting the same conditions. This is great because these are the two, I keep saying it, the two big boys. And I want to make sure that we are looking at comparable numbers in this test, which, um, you know, 10% challenges is always, you know, even though we line them up on a graph, external conditions do impact uh, every result. So if we're ever trying to compare a car, like stuff like this we always try and get the most important ones done on almost identical conditions or even if better same day so that's what we're doing here we have just crossed 100 miles and that is such a important benchmark in our 10 percent challenge test because 100 miles is what we consider to be really the um, next level of EV road tripping, if you will. We always say we never recommend road tripping an EV that does really less than 75 miles in this test. Anything 100 or over is like, yeah, that's a great road tripping EV uh, without question. And we are into the 100 miles now, uh, still with plenty to spare. So we already knew the Lucid Air was a range road trip king. And yep, it's proving itself here once again. Now the question is, how deep into the hundreds can we go? Right there, I have the battery preconditioning logo on as I have uh, sort of gotten a little bit closer to the charging station. Of course, when we turn around halfway, we do put the uh, end destination, the charger back in the nav because that's what you would do on a road trip is you would hop from charger to charger. And uh, yep, when we get to our halfway turnaround point, we then put in the charging station that we left from and enable battery preconditioning. Now this doesn't help outright efficiency, that's totally true, but again, it's supposed to be road trip representative, and that's what we do with every car on this test. We navigate to the charging station, and it's not like I, it says turn signals unavailable. What the heck? My turn signals are unavailable. Um, what, really? Anyway, they seem to work fine, I think. Um, yep, back into Colorado now. Yes, we're, uh, every car goes through this uh, preconditioning test. I forgot what point I was going to make, but it's 2 in the morning, and we're still ripping and cruising, and I got not much more to add because I am running on just a few brain cells left. 
Well, we are getting towards the final bit of the test and it looks like I've planned this perfectly because it says a 9% arrival back at the EA station and that's what we like to see. We want to dip from 11% to 10% as close to the charger as absolutely possible. And right now we are about to pass 130 miles traveled, which is a absolutely massive number and uh, surpasses the Model 3 long range by quite a bit. Interestingly, I'm pretty sure the charging performance of this and the Model 3 long range were pretty close in terms of C rate because I also charged the Model 3 from 10 to roughly 54% in 15 minutes, but this has a much larger battery pack, which means I can uh, put in more energy. Of course, we put in way more energy than the Model 3, and the car is um, uh, still pretty efficient. So we are going farther, and officially we will be passing the Model 3 long range here, which was a great benchmark, as that was the best Tesla we've ever had in our test. Now, I have not run the Model S long range. I need to do that, but something makes me think that maybe the Model 3 is right around what that Model S long range would do anyway. And so I think we can say pretty definitively as someone who spent a lot of time with Model S and Model S charging and Model S efficiency, the Lucid is a better uh, road tripper in this test in terms of miles of usable range added per minute of charging. And uh, yeah, I feel pretty comfortable with that statement. So let's, uh, let's keep going. We've got another long ways to go still. We are just about to cross another absolutely amazing milestone. Maybe the first time for me in this test. No, that's not true because I did Tycon Sport Turismo. 140 miles now and we still have room to go. Absolutely incredible. We're up there with the big boys. Ionic 6, Tycon, and Last Gen Lucid I think are the only ones that have made it into the 140s. Uh, and of course, New Gen Tycon. So it's... No question, we knew this car was gonna be great, and it is. You join me in the Lucid, back in the express lane. It has warmed up a little bit, uh, 56 degrees compared to when we were up in Wyoming, but holy smokes, we've hit another mega milestone. This is only the second car ever that we've tested to reach 150 miles. The number one vehicle, the new Taycan, basically the same thing as Ryan's driving, but it was the four wheel drive. So the 4S model, the dual motor with the wagon shape, which is far less efficient than the sedan. That's currently the number one in this test at 158 miles. Can we match it in this? I don't know. Uh, certainly I think uh, we know Ryan's gonna go farther than that because we have a much more efficient version of Taycan. Uh, than that particular one, but at least in terms of the order of these videos and of the order of finishing up this test, we could, if we can get another 6.9 miles on, beat the Taycan. Let's go Lucid! 10%, there we go, 154. Just a couple miles off of the Taycan and we're ending it right literally at the exit from where we started. That could not have been a more perfect loop style test to counteract elevation and as much wind as possible. This is literally the exit we got onto the highway with. Hell yeah. Still an incredible result. The second farthest result we've ever had in this test. And um, wow, no question. This thing is an amazing road tripping vehicle. So I'll leave you here with my thoughts uh, very quickly, which is Lucid Air is... Um, Absolutely incredible from the driving experience. ADAS could use some improvement. And I really think they could, if they just beef up this charging curve, they will have a winner on their hands. It just needs serious charging performance. The fact that we're matching the equivalent C rate, basically, of a Model 3 isn't really showing incredible charging excellence, in my opinion. Even though the numbers are big, it's a pretty big battery. I mean, it's 118 kilowatt hour pretty much usable battery pack. That's a freaking juicy one. So let's, uh, yeah, let's work on charging Lucid and then this thing will just smoke just about everything. But uh, as for now, the only car that will go farther than this that we've tested is the Taycan Sport Turismo. And Ryan says he's on track for a mega number right now in the sedan. That's still extremely impressive, but I don't think anyone is gonna be disappointed with the incredible result of the Lucid Air 
here in the charging 10% challenge situation, whatever we call it. Anyway, 2.30 a.m., I've got a meeting at 7 a.m., so I better get to bed, and I'll see you guys soon. I'm going to hand it off to Ryan for the analysis. I'm excited to be joining you with what's my favorite part, and that is, of course, the data analysis. The first thing I want to review is the testing conditions. Unfortunately, things just weren't ideal. We saw some pretty chilly temperatures. It was in the low 50s down into the 40s degrees Fahrenheit, and there was also a tiny bit of wind. If there were better conditions, I'm certain we would have gone a little bit further. However, we wanted to do the testing on this day because we had both this Lucid Air as well as the 2025 Porsche Taycan in full range spec, and we would be able to test them both right next to each other back to back to get as direct of a comparison as possible. With that being said, if we do have an opportunity to retest either of these vehicles, we'll update those results, and those results will be found on outofspecstudios.com. With that, let's jump into the, this data. I always like to say that the 10% challenge is a combination of both charging speed and efficiency. So let's just start with charging. We saw a 321 kilowatt peak charging speed, and that's really impressive. CCS is generally limited to 350 kilowatts, so 321 is pretty good. The charging curve wasn't quite as impressive. We still managed to deliver 54.2 kilowatt hours. That's actually more energy than the previous generation Porsche Taycan. It's actually the second most energy delivered out of any vehicle we've ever tested in this 10% challenge, second only to a 2025 Porsche Taycan that Kyle tested out in Europe. Next, let's talk about efficiency. We had an indicated about 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour, and we generally calculate the efficiency for this test by dividing the miles driven by the energy delivered. With that calculation, we saw 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour. That's better than the Mercedes EQS, the Hyundai Ioniq 6. Honestly, it's better than pretty much everything except for some, but not even all, Tesla Model 3s. Of course, this combination of great charging and exceptional efficiency leads to great results. 155 miles is really great, and it nearly beats the current leader, the 2025 Porsche Taycan 4S Sport Turismo. It's only a few miles difference, and like I mentioned before, more favorable testing conditions easily could have made that difference there. Regardless, that 155 miles is a really great result. It's a ton of driving for what is realistically a pretty quick stop. One thing I want to discuss is that charging curve that Kyle does like to complain about. Something that I do think is of value in this context is that even though we've got a great result here with this 10% challenge, you can charge longer with the Lucid Air and go significantly further. If you charge for a total of 20 or 25 minutes, you'll have you'll be you'll have much more battery with and with such a big battery and so much uh, efficiency, you're going to be able to go extremely far. And yes, a 20 or 25 minute stop is quite long, but it's nice to have the flexibility to be, to be able to go even further if you did want to. Again, just an interesting tidbit, but regardless, an incredible result, and truly, this is a world-class road tripper. Great work to Lucid. I'm so happy to be sharing this with you guys. If you guys have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them below. We'll see you on the next one.